the Cedar Cliff Colts boys basketball team look to take their program to the next level during the 2019-2020 season. Head coach Ty Saverkul was optimistic about this year's team and eager to see how they would compete as the season began. Uh, Ty Saverkul, I'm the head coach at Cedar Cliff High School. Okay, this is my fourth season here. Um, you know, first year we kind of inherited uh, an inexperienced team and we've, we've slowly been building from there. Uh, you know, second year we qualified for, for district playoffs. Uh, last year in our third season, we had a team that had to weather a boatload of adversity with injuries. But what it ended up doing was allowing some of the younger players last year get experience, which we're seeing pay off this year um, in a lot of different settings because guys, you know, last year had to kind of step into roles sooner than we expected for them. And, you know, it's, it's paying off in our fourth year in terms of the product on the court. Uh, hi, I'm Jerry Zaworski. I'm a senior at Cedar Grove High School. I think Cedar Grove basketball is all about um, hard work uh, and just being blue collar, doing things the right way, always putting your best foot out there. My name is Charlie Werner. I'm a sophomore. Cedar Grove basketball is all about hard work. We play together. We're we're just a family, basically. My name is Nick Strain, I'm, I'm in 11th grade. It's really based on attitude and toughness, like every single detail matters. I'm Matthew Musselman, I'm a senior. Uh, it's definitely made me mentally tougher, taught me how to work harder, and uh, I think playing this year is definitely going to help me in the future. I think we have a lot of size, good talent, and I think we're very close as a team, like really, really close team. Discipline and execution, we gotta stay aggressive. We have to be disciplined in what we do, we have to be tough in what we do, all right? Everything has to be strong, everything has to be in rhythm. When we play in rhythm, we can score with anyone. Toughness, loose balls, 50-50 stuff, all right? All the, all the hustle plays, the tough plays, the attitude plays, we gotta win those. Let's go. The Colts had put in a lot of hard work over the summer, and expectations were high. I mean, we had high expectations coming in. Uh, you know, we had a decent amount of size. We had, you know, some returning guards that, that played last year. Um, in addition to, you know, a senior in Joey Zaworski that was, you know, first team everything last year for us. So, you know, we had we had the length, we had the experience, we had uh, a lot of pieces that comprise a basketball team. So, uh, rightfully so. And due to the product that they put in in the summer with the work ethic, we had high expectations. 
Um, I mean, going into the season, we had really high expectations for ourselves. We expected nothing but nothing but good stuff this offseason. Beginning of the year, I had uh, for the season, I had high hopes. Cedar Cliff opened their season on the road, traveling to Big Spring, Palmyra, Hershey, Chambersburg, and Lower Dauphin. With a 5-0 record, they hosted their first home game against their crosstown rival, Redland, and they packed the bleachers with students and fans. The Colts won the game with an impressive score, 74-25. Over the winter holiday break, the team traveled to East Pennsboro High School to compete in the East Pennsboro Holiday Tournament. After dominating Greencastle 74-48, they outlasted the tournament host with a thrilling 55-54 victory. They were crowned tournament champions and extended their record to 8-0. At the start of the season, season looking uh, in, right away I thought, I think we have a chance to play at the Giant Center for the district championship. We started 8-0, we were looking great. The first week of the season was an absolute fall. We were undefeated for some time and we had really high hopes for the future and we hope to continue to write that right up. Saber Cool squad credited their successful start to their blue-collar mindset and strong team chemistry. Behind the leadership of seniors Joey Zavorski, Matthew Musselman, and German foreign exchange student Nick Peters, several young players were called upon to make key contributions to help their team succeed. The entire team practiced hard and saw their efforts translate into on-the-court success. This side is interesting. Uh, he, he wants us to work hard all the time. They work really hard. Uh, it, it, it's the hardest working group of guys that, that I've coached um, or been a part of coaching. They, they really commit to the terminology sweat equity. Well, yeah, Coach Ty, he's a really tough coach. He's really tough on us, but it's really all about how much he cares for us, you know? Uh, they, they love being around each other. We like to meet up outside games. We just like to have fun together, basically. Uh, they just get in the gym and they work, uh, whether it be stuff that we have scheduled or just asking to get in to make themselves better players. say Trenton Smith showed the most growth this season just because he came in the season probably not expecting to start maybe get a little bit of minutes here and there but he's been thrown into the fire basically just having to start some games due to injuries and whatnot and he's done great honestly I think he's going to be a really good player in the future. Nick Peters, he's from Cologne, Germany. He brought a great asset to us from his length, especially, you know, 6'10", and it's uh, pretty, well, I won't say easy, but you have advantages being 6'10 in the world of basketball. And he really just brought length and height to our game, and it really helped a lot. He's a really cool guy to hang out with and stuff, you know? He's really, he's really funny, actually. <laughs> Uh, it's just all around. It's, it's been what we're building towards and establishing in the culture of the program.
On New Year's Eve, Cedar Cliff hosted Central York and would suffer their first loss of the season. Went through a little bit of a rough patch, tough game against Central York. Uh, we started the year really strong, um, hit some hiccups along the way with things that we don't really control. Three days later, the Colts lost again at Susquehanna Township by a two-point margin. The game would not be the only thing lost. During the contest, senior Joey Zavorsky suffered what would become a season-ending leg injury. Yeah, against Susquehanna, I, I hurt my knee. Basically, um, a part of my femur chipped off. Oh, well, obviously we lost probably our best player, uh, Joey. Not only is he a really great friend, but uh, one of the best players I've ever played with especially when it comes from leading from example. So that's been hard to overcome, for sure. Well, the injury with Joey was real heartbreaking because even before the injury, like I looked up to him, I've seen him play ever since I was a freshman. So I was really, I leaned heavily towards him, you know? It's just sad to see, like, that's my bro. I, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wish he could play, like, it's crazy. It's hard to put into words. I mean, it just things for it to happen this, at this point in time, like second half of senior year, kind of sucks for it to happen like this, but and it's going to happen anyway. And um, I wish I wish I could be out there playing, but uh, my role has changed. I'm now Coach Zaborski, so <laughs> any way I can help, I, can, I will. the team would need to regroup and come together to find a way to overcome this adversity. We lost Joey then. We got, had to get our feet back under us, had to learn to play without him. So we, it's been an up and down from there. Uh, but, you know, we've been kind of battling and shifting in new roles whenever Joey went down with his injury uh, nine games into the season. What it ended up doing was guys kind of had to elevate into roles probably a year sooner than expected. So there was a little bit of a transition period for us. Um, now we're kind of reestablished and I think we're comfortable with where we're at now with these new roles. So now it's just, you know, continually piecing it together and, and learning from experiences. After we heard the news about Joey, we just knew that everybody had to step up. So we kind of got us all together a little bit more. Knew we had to play harder every game. Couldn't leave any game out. Mm, through those challenges, we really had to bounce back hard, you know? Just keep working every day and just keep playing through adversity, even though it, if it wasn't going good for us.
Following the injury to Joey Zaworski, the Colts lost their third straight game at Bishop McDevitt, but the team continued to believe in each other and slowly started to find a way to win again. They came within two points of Mechanicsburg and then won four of the next five games, including a second crushing defeat to their rival Patriots. They would go on to close out the regular season with a 13-9 record and qualify for District 3 playoffs. Going into the postseason, uh, we've competed with a lot of really good teams, so I think we can still meet that goal if we play up to our potential. Um, well, we are we're very focused on the game Monday. We've been watching film. We've been prepping all, all week, basically, for Shippensburg. Um, I think that we, even though we're a 12 seed, we, we have the potential to make a run and be that Cinderella team this season. And um, I'm just excited to get it, get it started. We, we are right there to turning the page and winning games. You know, the, what we've done in the second half of the year is, you know, we, we've beaten teams that uh, on paper we feel we should beat. Uh, the teams that we're right there with, uh, teams that are in district playoffs, whether it be in 6A and 5A and 4A, uh, you know, that maybe on paper we're not supposed to beat. We're taking it down to the last possession. We're taking it down to the last minute. And, you know, some of that is a product of we've, we've got three sophomores on the floor. We have a freshman on the floor against Gettysburg, uh, but it's valuable experience. And I think once we get one of those games to kind of turn in our favor, I think then, you know, we're going to begin to rip off a couple in a row. So, you know, the mindset leading into Monday is really, again, a team on paper, probably supposed to beat us by chalk. Uh, but, you know, we're going to continue to work and make it a game. And, if we can end up you know, cleaning up some of the things that we need to clean up in the second half of games, we're going to be on the right side of the scoreboard at the end of the night. Sippensburg Monday, so it's just, in my head, it's just another game. I was going to games trying to be prepared, knowing I got to work hard and just play my hardest to do whatever I can to get the W. Uh, for Monday, we're slowly getting there. We still have a lot to work on, obviously. Well, every team does in playoffs, pretty much. But yeah, we still have a lot to build on, but we're looking pretty solid now, and we have high hopes for the future. I still think we have the capability to make a deep run. I mean, we have the most size in the area, and I think we have one of the deepest teams in the area. And I think we can still make a run at it. In the first round of the playoffs, Cedar Cliff traveled to Shippensburg to square off against the Greyhounds. The Colts got off to a strong start and went into halftime feeling confident. In the second half, however, Shippensburg's size and athleticism proved to be too much for Cedar Cliff, and the Greyhounds pulled away with a 63-50 win. In the second round, Cedar Cliff would host Lower Dauphin, a team they had beaten twice during the regular season. This game, sadly, would not end with the same outcome. The Cedar Cliff Colts season ended with a 76-43 loss to the Falcons. It is natural to wonder what might have been had things played out differently. Though their season didn't end as expected, the Colts accomplished much and had a lot to be proud of. They swept the Redland Patriots in dominant fashion and their fans and community continued to show them love and support. Uh, being from Cedar Cliff, beating Redland twice is always, always awesome to do. Yeah, I mean, the, the West Shore War with Redland is something that I thought I knew uh, coming into here because I, I coached at Central Dauphin for three years and Central Dauphin at CD East there as well. So I kind of thought, I was like, oh yeah, sister school, you know, you know the environment, you know, more people come out, the, the community's intrigued, but, you know, I, it, it was a whole other world my first year and, you know, 
Every year, it's just a game that it's a playoff environment. It's a full house. It's there's lots of noise. Uh, it's it's a uh, I would say it's a friendly rivalry because it's our, our middle schools are blended. So a lot of these kids, you know, play with each other, go with, go to the same middle school with each other, and they just feed to different different high schools. So it's something where it's it's fostered a rivalry that's you know it's got deeper roots than any rivalry you'll find. Uh, in Central PA, and it's it's just a lot of fun for the community. Those those types of games, and even the non-Redland games, the big games that that the student section comes out for. I mean, it just elevates the environment, and it gets the guys ready to go. Um, it, it's a competitive edge for us, no doubt. Having the student section sit on the end line and make noise, and and uh, continue to cheer us on. Our student section and community usually come out pretty good. It's real nice when we have like a big crowd; they get real rowdy. They come to play a lot. Our community is really, they really support us a lot. And we, we're so grateful for them. Even like our, our student section, our community, our fans, our parents, our every, everybody in the, in the town, in the city, you know. It is really hard. We're back in almost every situation. Ultimately, they faced adversity and they persevered. They continued to work hard with a blue-collar attitude, and they continued to believe in each other. These are qualities that will serve them well in their future, both on the court and off.